Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Easy SAP ABOP. Today I wanted to just kind of highlight the uh, newer ABOP syntax. This in particular is going to deal with inline data declaration, which is a really neat feature. And uh, if you're on an SAP version that is, you know, up to date enough where you have this, that is an amazing feature that's going to simplify your life by a good bit. So let's go ahead and I think the best way to do this let's let's actually not declare any variables here we'll say start of selection so we're just gonna get an event that we can start working in so let's say data and this is the new syntax in parentheses after the the data um, keyword we can define our variable so I'll just say message MSG equals and I can do string templates here Let's let's even do this. Let's uh let's create a constant. I'll say C uh, I don't know value. Let's be generic as hell, guys. <laughs> Char 10 value SAP. Let's just do SAP. So I'll I'll change this constant to C SAP. So there's some semblance of sense happening here. So now I can come in here. I could actually, you know, if you guys aren't familiar with this syntax, I could just say whatever, some text, and if I check this code, everything works out okay because this is the same thing as, ooh, this is the same thing as saying data msg type c, and then you know saying length, whatever the length is going to be, uh, 15, some arbitrary number, and then saying message equals some text. So this that takes two lines and a lot more typing is equivalent to this. This is inline data declaration available with the newer versions of SAP ABOP, the newer versions of NetWeaver. Um, so, you know, if you have this available, definitely use it. It's going to save you some typing. But what really is uh, going to shine for us is we can do, um, you know, the string comprehension here. I can say my favorite program is C underscore SAP and let's do let's do let's do message MSG type I so if I run this program what I'm gonna have happen is I'm gonna get this string that's created in line called MSG this string is going to say my favorite program is and then in these curly brackets it's going to take the value and put it in the string so if I run it I get a message like this my favorite program is SAP woohoo <laughs> now that's you know fine and good uh, one thing we can do is say you know if there's an object that we know returns something so let's say we have let's get rid of this we'll get rid of this too just for simplicity say data um, let's say table type ref to cl salv table I'll go ahead actually I do need a variable for this I'll say data let's make it a global we we don't have to make it a global and actually we won't let's do this data gt spfli type table of it's not going to be gt down here Dustin it's going to be t spfli type table of spfli then we're going to create this uh Sorry, I'm working on a keyboard that I'm not really familiar with, so it's going to not be as quick as my usual videos. Now we'll just go ahead and don't worry about all this. This is going to be stuff that you don't need to concern yourself with. We'll say tab oh, table, CL, SALV, table, and then we'll call the factory method. So what this is going to do, it's going to create an ALV table, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I've shown you about a million ways to do this, so don't worry too much about what's happening in here. And then a pet peeve of mine, I can't stand this redundancy here, so we'll actually get rid of this, add a parentheses, and I'm not going to handle this, so I'll do a pragma no underscore handler so that extended code check doesn't complain about it so I'm just creating a reference to an ALV table 
Actually, first thing I should do is select some data into my internal table, T underscore SPFLI. I'll just say select everything into table, T underscore SPFLI from SPFLI. So, we got here. Select some data. Get reference to our table variable that we've declared. And we can say, let's do this. Data. Maybe we want to get a reference. So normally what we'd have to do, if we wanted to get a reference to the columns object, we'd have to come in here, declare an auxiliary variable, data, um, local reference, columns, type ref 2 clsalv underscore columns, table or columns, you know, whatever. With the inline declaration, we don't, we don't have to care. <laughs> we can say columns in parentheses equals table get columns and then I can say columns and then call methods on it so I can say anything in here data column equals I could say columns get columns or get column and then whatever that uh, column name is gonna be so then I can come down here and say column set medium text hello let's actually set all these texts so we can see the result in our output so now we've saved ourselves for these two lines an additional two lines where we're saying something like data columns type ref to cl salv columns table lr underscore column equals table get columns and data lr underscore column type ref to cl salv column can't type column table and then say lr underscore column equals table get not table <laughs> lr underscore column get column mandat so then we can come down here and say lr column set column oh we're not even the right object here so see this is just a lot more all of this can be replaced with these two lines we get a reference to our columns get a reference to our column and say set some stuff on it then we can come down here we want to work with another column say column equals columns get column and then say city from and then set our you know values here so this is a lot easier than declaring this data up front and if we check this code of course we're gonna have no errors so we're creating this this variable and using the result of this method call to type it so we don't have to worry at all about you know anything it's pretty good it's pretty good so one more thing we could do if we escape host variables we can say select all from SPFLI into table and if we do at underscore and then the name of the table that we want so I'll just call it local table SPFLI oh I have to do at data excuse me into table at data so this I'm not even going to begin to start writing the other stuff but this selects data from SPFLI into a table that we've defined in line 
So we don't have to come up here and say data um, GT table type ref or not type ref type standard table of SPFLI. It's all done right here. So we can then come down here and say uh, call our factory method. Get rid of these parameters we don't need. Our SALV table. Well, so we do have to create that the old way. Table type ref to CLSALV table. Pass in table. Pass in our LT underscore SPFLI. Uh, go ahead and handle this catch. I won't pretty this up too much for now. And then we can say down here, table display. So if we check our code, activate our code, and if we go ahead and run it, what we're going to wind up with is this output. So that's the beauty of using inline data declarations with the you know, newer version of NetWeaver that you can create all of these variables that are going to be short-lived variables typically, local variables um, that you don't want to necessarily have to figure out the type of and everything like that. We could actually get started a selection, I think, and move that out of here now. So just to illustrate my point, what we've got going with this new school way of inline data declaration is, let's go ahead and just get rid of these blanks. I'm just curious to see what's going on here. In one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lines of code, what we've done is written an open SQL query, created an internal table, which back, you know, old school syntax would have been a lot more verbose. We've called a method on the internal table and we have actually displayed the result of a SQL query. So it's again very imperative that uh, you guys learn this new syntax if you're going to be working with it. You know if you have a newer system at your disposal definitely learn it because it's going to make your life so much easier and uh, it's just so much more convenient for about developers in general so you know we could actually even condense this down a lot of you guys are since the uh, line length doesn't matter as much now in newer versions you're putting more on one line you don't have to insert an unnecessary line break so in one two three four five six seven lines of code in just seven short lines of code at that we can select something from the database and display it in an output display so that's about as simple as it gets, guys. Use this new syntax to your benefit. If you have any questions about it, as always, please feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.